Hi, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. And uh, today what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about a canvas, making your own canvas. Now, those of you that follow along my art career know that for many, many years, I've loved to use these, these canvas panels. Uh, I like to use a canvas panel as opposed to stretch canvas because with a lot of the techniques I do, especially with painted simply, I put a lot of pressure on the brush and a lot of movement on the brush. And I don't like the spring that the... Uh, the uh, canvas, the stretch canvas, gives you uh, to the brush. I feel that it, it uh, reduces some of that uh, pressure that I really want to get there. So I use a more stable surface, which is like a canvas panel. But over the years, I've watched these canvas panels slowly, a lot of them from different companies, slowly uh, change and get less and less and less quality to them. Um, and, you know, you'll get these, like, uh, some of them will get very rough surfaces here. And, uh, you know, so when you take them out of the package and stuff, they're very rough. And like this one is already, you know, warped, you know, and um, which isn't too much a problem because I'll show you how we take away warping and stuff. But it's it, it's thinner and just feels flimsy. Um, uh, and, and they all they come in all different kinds of ways and some of them finer. This one's sealed in plastic still. This one that I have here doesn't even say who it is on the back. So you have, um, it's just a canvas that you, that you get, canvas board. You have absolutely no idea about the quality of it. And, you know, so you're getting all these variations in there. And so as I've started to, you know, upgrade the uh, uh, surfaces that I've been using, uh, getting into what I know works well. So especially if I'm selling a painting or if I'm doing an heirloom piece, I know that piece is going to last for a long, long, long time, for hundreds of years, okay? And so I got into starting to make my own canvases. And uh, to do that, I use all different kinds of uh, wood grounds. Uh, this is a this is one that a lot of artists are beginning to use now. It's just a regular. It's the new what's called Super MDF, not MDF. It's the Super MDF. If you notice, it's quite a bit flatter. It's not warped out at all here. Um, these are made with new non-toxic resins. They're lightweight. They're very very stable structured surfaces. They're really nice, and uh, you can use this as a ground to apply your canvas to. Uh, or I do a lot of painting right directly on this panel. I just go ahead and I seal it with the uh, Heritage Multi-Surface uh, multi Sealer. This is a fantastic sealer here. Um, this sealer uh, will make the surface extremely, extremely hard. And uh, it gives you a high quality surface. It's very, it's a very good thing if you're doing a thin, anything that's thin, that you do both sides. You do the front side and the back side. That will reduce the warping that will happen with the piece over time. And you will, if you just do one side of this board, you will get some warping to it. And why? Because this sealer that we use is so powerful that as it's drying, it pulls itself together. So if you have it across the surface like this, as it dries, it pulls itself together like this, and it puts a slight warp to it. But if you coat the other surface, the other side of it, it'll flatten it right back out again, okay? So that works. But I do like these for just regular painting panels, and I do like this also as a ground for what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, my favorite, though, ground is I love to use wood. I like to use wood um, panels whenever possible. So, like when I do uh, these paintings that I have here, these two births that I have here, I have, um, I've done, the, you know, a lot, well, a lot of them, and um, the deer and Whitetail Creek. This is how I'm, this is my chosen way to prepare a surface now. And this surface is, is absolutely wonderful to paint on. And it is a wood panel, and you can see, and it's a wood panel that I've given a coat of the sealer and stuff to the other side. But it, this is one that I have adhered can, uh, fabric to. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And it makes an absolutely beautiful, beautiful painting surface. And the weave of this, and I don't know if I can get the camera in so uh, so you can, you can, you know, see the, the maybe see some of the weave of, the, of this canvas in here, is very, very, very fine. I, yeah, you can hardly see it. And that is because I use a linen. And so you can see, you can set, step up, you know, textured strokes on it really. Oh, here where I have it really light, you can see a little bit of the weave come through. So if you use your, your you know, your uh, um, colors in such a way, you'll still see that nice canvas look to the painting here. Um, 
and uh, I I enjoy that that part of uh, you know painting where I can let some of that canvas show through you know you're the artist and so I want to show you what it is that I do and what I use is you can you have your choice of products here and well one of them is a light primer which uh, I use the light primer because basically my canvas is light we also have a dark primer you can use that uh, and I use a surface a multi-surface sealer you could also use glazing medium you could also use uh, the varnish all of our heritage products are extremely powerful so all you want to do is adhere this fabric to the surface and you can use any one of those uh, the uh, any one of those to do that the number one best one by far is the multi-surface sealer it is the most powerful and that's exactly what it's designed to do um, and uh, you, we, it is as far as all the mediums go and stuff like that. It's less expensive than, say, a varnish or something like that, which you could do it with as well. But I love the multi-surface sealer. It's very, very powerful, and it will have no problem with with anything. And I'll show you that. The uh, light primer is is really multi-surface sealer with some light pigment in it. So uh, because the light pigment's in it, it's it's it re reduces down its power just a little. Not so much that it's going to hurt anything that we do. Uh, you could use light primer all by itself. You could use this all by itself. Or you do what I do is I take a big old bottle and I had an almost empty bottle of a light primer and I took light primer and sealer together. Uh, that's why I, I, I like to do it. But many times, many, many times, I will use sealer all by itself. Just put on the sealer, and then it, it, then I can go ahead and choose any kind of color that I want, okay? So you can you have your choice. You can even use our glazing medium. But the by far, the number one is sealer. But then you can, you know, you can play with it. Because the products are so powerful, you have lots of stuff to play with. Now, as far as fabric, this is a piece of linen. And this isn't the pure white linen. This isn't ecru linen. Uh, and Martha goes over to the fabric store. She buys me just, just mountains of this stuff that I use. Uh, it's fantastic. And she got me six more yards here. And what I'll usually do, uh, you know, is I'll set one day aside and in the afternoon and I'll lay out a whole bunch of panels. And then I will, you know, use that as my adhere day where I'll put the fabric to it. Um, and it, it goes really, really fast. I'll show you. But um, uh, you can use any of your grounds. That's what I wanted to show you. You can use your MDF or anything like that. Now, how do you get these panels? This panel that I really love is a wood panel. And this is a uh, Baltic birch panel here. So it has this mark on it. So I'll make sure I put it to the back side here. But it's a, a 1 8 inch uh, thin. And you can see this panel already has a little bit of a warp to it. Which when we start to put the fabric on and put the thing on, that'll take that out. A little bit of a warp to it. It's, it's not too bad. But it's a thin panel. It's a lightweight panel. But it's wood. It's a layered It's a layered Baltic birch ply. And uh, you can get three and four layer uh, plies to it. It's a very nice surface. And we cut these and uh, you know out in our wood shop and stuff and this is what I use if you don't have that you can go down to your local hardware store or your local home store and they can they have double tempered masonite that works really really well that for a four by eight sheet of that is only about eight dollars or so um, and also it's it's less expensive for the uh, super MDF over there too so you know you can get you know 20 canvases out of the out of an eight dollar sheet of that wood and then put the fabric down and stuff uh, and then you know you have high quality so there's a much there's a bunch of different grounds that you can use as the base of it i like wood you can uh you know they make a beautiful lightweight uh at some of the home stores sandy ply oak ply big four by eight sheet of it is about twenty dollars and you can pay them a couple dollars and they'll cut those down to any size that you want then you bring that panel back and uh, then you just cut out a piece of uh, a linen here that's just a little bit oversized you want it just a little bit oversized to it and then what I'm going to do is just really quickly adhere it. And there's there's no big trick to this. I'm just going to take my medium out here and put it out. Now, what I put it out on with is a big sponge. This is a tile setter sponge. And again, I get these at my local home store. You buy them like this. It's just a, it's just a couple dollars for a big sponge. I cut it into, you know, I cut it up into, into fours. You know, I cut it in half and then cut it again. And, and uh, um, 
this you know makes the whole unit here and I'll, so I'll just use a quarter of it here and then before I go do this I get the sponge slightly wet doesn't need to be but I get it just a little bit wet and now what I'm going to do is you have you have again there's don't stress about this thing because the products are so powerful you can do it all different kinds of ways sometimes I just lay the fabric right on the surface and <clears throat> pour the material right on top of it and then uh, sometimes I will put down a coat that's right underneath. Both of them work equally as well. I've tried it. I've tried to make mistakes with this and haven't had any kind of problem. So if you want to make absolutely sure, um, you know, you just give a coat underneath here and just squirt out a lot of this. Now this is a mixture that I use of light primer and uh, the sealer all together. And you can notice it's quite thick. It'll stick, it'll stick up onto the surface. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I just take off the lid like this and I'll just pour out some on the surface. Now I'm going to, and it's a really good idea to wear um, gloves when you do this because these primers and sealers are very powerful. Get them on your hands, you have a hard time washing them off. Now what I want to do is just spread this out over the surface here like this. Just to make sure, especially along the edges here, especially along the edges, but just making sure that the entire surface is uh, coated. It doesn't have to be equally coated. Don't make You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff because it's going to soak up into the fabric here. Okay, so you don't have to worry about equally coated or anything like that. So you can see it coats it very nice, very quickly. Okay, and then what uh, I do is I'm just going to set this fabric down onto, this, onto the side. Now, you'll notice this fabric here. I grabbed a piece that had all kinds of uh, wrinkles in it and all that kind of stuff. So you'll see over here, it's got all these wrinkles in it. You don't have to worry about any of that because as this adheres down, it's going to uh, flatten out. So I'll, first I'll just run my, my hands over it here and you'll see it's already adhered down to the uh, surface. And that's partially because this is just super powerful stuff. But uh, and you can see it's starting to soak through into my hands here real quick. Now what I'm gonna do is use what is in my, in my sponge here and just go over the surface here and start adhering this down a little bit more and a little bit more pushing it through. What I want to do is give a nice coating here to the um, to the surface here. Now sometimes you'll get like a little bubble or something like that and there might be something that's right underneath there and yes there was a little piece of something right there on the surface. You can just pull it back up and you'll be able to uh, re-stretch it right back again and flatten it out. So you don't have to worry about that. And So if you get any kind of like a little edge or something like that, just pull it lightly from the side and that'll flatten that all out for you, just like that. And I like to give it a, a pretty good coat of this. So as it's going through, I'll just pour out a little bit more here onto the surface here. You can't use too much of this stuff. That's the beautiful thing about it is, is it, it's very versatile. And the more you use, the, the better adherence you're really going to get. But um, you know, it'll all go down. I like to work it through the weave. And I'll work it like this several times here work this through until I make sure this weave is really full of this material here. Okay, so I really fill it up quite a bit here and uh, work over the whole canvas. You'll be able to feel, it's really a nice feeling, you'll be able to feel when that fabric is completely full. You'll see it and it'll start to bead on the top a little bit and that's when you know it's time for you to, uh, you know, you, you've got enough. But one of the things that you do want to do is just come right along the edges here and make sure, because that's where it would, it, it'll be the weakest, is right along the edges as it's drying there. So just make sure you get a good bit on the edges here like this, all the way around on the edges, and make sure everything is down and flat. Okay, and then we're just going to set this to, um, we're going to set this over to dry. Now, it'll take, you know, depending on, of course, how much you put into the surface, it will take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour or so to start to dry, depending on, you know, of course, also the time of year, humidity, all that kind of stuff. It's all going to change it. Um, usually about, I'll let it dry up for about 20 or 30 minutes before it is completely dry and, and, and just a little bit tacky, I'm going to come back and I'm going to trim it and I'm going to show you why in just a minute. So I'm going to go let this dry for just a minute and then we'll come back and I'll show you the trimming part of it. 
Okay, welcome back. Now I let that dry there about 10, 15 minutes. You could even use a hair dryer on that. And uh, I just don't let it go to its full dry, which is over 24 hours. It takes, the sealer takes about 24 to 36 hours, depending upon how much humidity is in the air, to really yeah, kind of uh, harden up. But you wanna, you wanna trim it, before that hardens up. So sometimes between 10 minutes and 30 hours, you want to trim it uh, just because it becomes easier to trim. And I'm gonna use a single edge razor blade here. Uh, if you let this really harden up, you can still trim it. It's just harder to trim because it hardens the surface. Now, how I do this is I'll make a little bit of a cut down here from the top, right where I know where that edge of that uh, fabric is gonna be. And then I'll push the knife up here from the bottom like this, and I'll just pull down like this, running the knife along the edge like this, pulling it down, and it'll trim off that edge here just like that, okay? And it might, depending upon how dry it is, and this is still a little bit tacky, it's going to pull up a little bit along the edge. So just a few edges right there along the edge. It might pull up just a bit there like that. And I'll just trim off the uh, outside here of this. And this is a beautiful and, and uh, a beautiful, beautiful linen fabric that I use here. And there's all different kinds of weave. And we use a really fine uh, weaved linen fabric. And so you can use... Um, there's all different kinds of them that you could use. You can even adhere duck canvas to this if you want more of a, a canvas look to your, uh, to your, you know, to your, uh, um, to your can to your weave that you want. You could use that. Uh, there's all different kinds of things that you can use. And one of the things that uh, we'll be doing in the future here is like, say you want to do something for holidays, you can use a holiday fabric. And if you use the sealer all by itself, it dries absolutely clear and you won't disrupt any of the pattern or anything like that. I use the light primer just because it's the, it's the color of the canvas and stuff that I like. But um, you could use this with any kind of... Uh, you know, any kind of holiday pattern that you want and paint right up on top of it. So there's all kinds of fun things that, that you can turn around and do. But you can cut this, like I say, it's very versatile. You can cut it from the top here, just like I'm doing here too. I like to cut from the bottom because I get, I feel I get a, a, a very nice, you know, cut to it when I, when I do that. But uh, you can cut from any side. So both of all of that works. So once you get that all trimmed off, and it doesn't have to be absolutely trimmed perfect because we're going to be sanding it as well, make sure your edges are back again. Sometimes I like to take my sponge with some of that extra and just run it right on that edge with just a little bit more. And that just makes sure that that edge is really uh, pushed down because if it's going to release at all, it will release along that edge. Sometimes I'll run it right along the top up here like this but you can you can see that is even after drying just 10 minutes that thing is already adhered down very nice and I'll just run this right over the edge that's because this is such a powerful little thing now here I just peeled that up just a little bit there and it doesn't hurt that at all you just push it right back down here and just adhere the edge now once you have it like this, this is where I usually let it dry its full uh, 24 hours. And I know in some cases and stuff like that, you, you may not have that ability to do that. Maybe you need it for today. You got to do something. Well, then just go put it underneath the hairdryer. Make sure that once you get this side done and it's completely dry, turn it over and you're going to need to seal the other side as well. You're going to need to put a, a coat of this onto the other side. And that's going to keep the whole panel from warping. So whatever you do to one side, do it to the other side. Every time you give a coat of something to one side, give a coat of it to the other side. Okay, you don't need to cover it with canvas or anything or fabric. Just give it a, a coat to the other side. So there it is trimmed up here. I'm going to let this one dry for uh, just a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show it into the hairdryer there, and then I'll show you some things you can do with it. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, I just ran the hairdryer over that for a few minutes just to get its surface dried. Now, one thing to remember is there is a difference between dry and cure. 
Cure is when a product becomes its hardest, and for the sealers, that takes 24 to 36 hours for it to become its ultimate hardness. Okay, dry is means that you forced a lot of the water out of it. Okay, so here I have it pretty much dry. But if I work at this on the edge, I can pull this up and off of here, uh, even though it's dry because it's not cured yet. So usually what I'll do is I'll do several of these and wait for 24 to 36 hours before I do this next step. But you can, if you're in a rush and you need it, you can do it. You just need to be a little bit gentle with it. But one of the things that the next step that I do after I adhered it, then you can start uh, you know, dressing the surface the way you want to, to do. So uh, one of the things that I like to do is sand it lightly. Here's a 150 grit painter's sandpaper. This is a painter's sandpaper. You could use 180, 220, somewhere around there. But the 150, I wanted to show you 150. I wouldn't go any more than 150. But 150 can cut across the surface. We can sand this. Now, this has only been dried a few minutes, and I can still sand this here pretty hard here. And uh, I know it's difficult to tell, but now that is smooth off. Very, very nice. You will not cut the weave because the sealers and stuff go in there, lock up that weave and make it just like a wood surface, the sand a wood surface. It's very, very hard. So you could actually sand the surface down to you get, and I love the way that that feels. When you first, when you first put it on like over here, it's a little rough, but here now you can, you can hear the difference between the, between them over here here where I've sanded it lightly. You'll feel that difference. So when you first put that on, that sealer, see it goes in and it raises a grain of the wood and it'll make everything feel a little rough. Then you run a little sandpaper over the edge of it, I mean over the over the surface of it, and that smooths that right off and makes a beautiful, beautiful painting surface. And I like to paint directly like this. Matter of fact, most of the paintings that I do, I go directly right on. I sand it lightly and go right to painting. Transfer your design or do whatever, do your sketching on top of it. And, uh, but you can, if you want, if you want more of a matte surface, you can give a couple coats of uh, white paint to the surface of this. You can give texture medium over it if you want to get that look of an, of a, uh, you know, a real texturized painting. You can treat it just like you do any other canvas surface. And the nice thing is to know is that when you go to paint it, it won't beat up. This, when, when I sand it like this, it opens it up just a little bit and it'll make the surface absorb a little of extender and stuff. I love to paint the surface just like this. But like I say, you can give it paint on top. You can do whatever you want on top. Just uh, um, just make sure if you're using it right away like this that you're a little gentle with it because it won't be cured completely glued on here for 24 hours or so. If you have time, just set it aside, let it dry overnight and come back and do it tomorrow. Um, on the edges and stuff, and I'll just be gentle here, um, I like to cut the edges over like this with the sandpaper, like this, that this gets rid of all of the excess uh, fibers of the, uh, the linen that is there along the edge and it will make a nice smooth edge for you. Make sure that you do go through and you, and you seal the, uh, the back side of this thing, give the same thing, just a coat of it to the back side, let it dry and then sand it and you have a beautiful surface with everything adhered to here and um, uh, you know, you can, you can control it. So you can do it pretty quick like this. It's best to wait 24 hours, but you can paint real quick and you don't have to worry about painting on top of it because all the heritage uh, material cures through itself. So I can go directly painting on, I could take this right into my studio right now and start painting on this and everything will this canvas will still continue to adhere to it because all the products secure through themselves so you don't have to worry about that okay thanks very much for joining me i hope you give this uh, type of surface uh, uh you know a try you can get different types of linens different types of weaves and stuff i just got a really really fine uh linen here and as a matter of fact the linen is finer than a portrait weave on a canvas which is pretty fine and it just makes a just an incredible painting surface for you okay so and and overall and, and the cost i i found that the cost it, for doing this is just a few cents more maybe a dollar or more a panel or so than what you go get those panels at your local craft store so you can uh you and you know you've got a nice high quality surface this way okay thanks very much for joining me if you're looking for more uh, technique videos look at for us on globalartsupply.com we have a lot of technique videos there and more coming and i'll see you next time here at the jansen art studio 10 in 
make yourself some canvas pads here, some panels, and you'll enjoy the feel of it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.